important, wouldn't you say? So let's get the chat in here. We don't really have anybody else in the chat but me right now, but we're going to give it uh, less than a minute or so. I'm going to take a sip here. We get the Facebook stream started, and then we're going to get right on to it. Okay, so let me start with the Facebook stream, and then we'll get started. Okay, it looks like it's working. Wait, give me uh, another few seconds. Hello, Scott Alexander is here. Oh, welcome, Scott. Glad to have you with us today. All right, now, wait, let me make sure everything's working. Okay, I think we're good. All right. Let me get my notes out. All right, give me less than a minute, and then we'll be ready to go. Wait, let me do this. Hold on. There we go. students and welcome out to our classroom piano lessons on the web if it's your first time here in the classroom make sure you like our page if you're on Facebook make sure you um, have liked this video if you're watching on YouTube but also subscribed have all notifications turned on because we have new lessons coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a beat now do you all right today I'm going to be teaching you about what you should be practicing every day to get the most the best results at the time you spend at the piano but first i'm just going to say hello to some people so let some people come in here but we'll get started here in less than a minute uh we got scott alexander here welcome scott we got naji welcome out karen h is here everybody welcome out karen so happy that you are here today we got uh sworn uh welcome i believe it's your first time here but very awesome we got uh powell hello we got just for um, test only. Okay, hello. We got MRG. Welcome. And everybody else. We got Borgden, Christina, Filthy Will, and Borgden again. <laughs> uh, let's see. You haven't played in 12 years. I want to start again, says Christina. Well, yes. Very good luck to you. All right, we're going to get started here. And greetings to uh, Capitan. All right, everybody, let me get my notes here. Then we're going to get on with the lesson here. Okay. There are five things you should be practicing every single day to make sure that you are getting the most out of the time that you're spending on the piano. Your piano teacher, Tim, here, and let's get on with the lesson. Really quick, I want to break down that for each of these five things, I'm going to explain what that thing is. I'm going to explain um, how it's going to help you. And then thirdly, I'm going to explain how to practice that thing you should be practicing. Okay, on to the first one. All right, everybody. Here we go. The first thing you should be practicing on the piano is sight reading. Sight reading is by far the most useful skill you can practice on the piano because as the name implies, it involves reading something from sight. So there's what it is. Now, how it'll help you? Well, as you get better and better at um, sight reading, the faster you will be able to pick up new pieces of music because you'll see certain patterns that you'll see over and over again, just use in kind of different orders. Um, so learning how to sight reading, sight read, and then practicing it every day is super essential. It's like if you're learning a language, right? Well, if you learn, if you just read the same passage in French over and over again, you'll get really good at reading that passage. But you really want to be practicing reading different passages, you know, with different sentences, things like that. It applies to music the exact same way. So make sure that you are reading something new on a regular basis. Now let's get on to how you should be practicing sight reading. 
Well, the whole idea of sight reading, really the principles behind it, is to pick a piece or a passage within a piece that is a little bit underneath your current playing level. So whatever you're learning as a piece that you would practice every day, look for something that's just a little bit easier than that because the whole goal is to be able to go from the beginning of that piece to the end of that piece or passage, however long it may be, um, with as few mistakes as you can. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. So how to practice? Well, there are a ton of sight reading books online. Let me show you a couple I like. Okay, let me get this up here, everybody. I'll show you what sight reading books I commonly use. Okay, looking on Amazon here, I am a huge fan of this Paul Harris's Paul Harris um, selection here of improve your sight reading um, piano level one. There's actually levels one to level eight, I believe. This is perfect. Like level ones, obviously, if you've never sight read in your life before, and I believe maybe not. Oh, there it is. Hold on. And like a lot of books on Amazon, there is uh, the preview thing where you can kind of take a look what they're going to be covering the first few pages just to kind of see if this is too easy for you. But like I said, there are many levels to choose from. Let's take a look on the sidebar here. Take a look at level 7. So obviously by level 7 you'll be pretty far along. But I highly recommend this series. It really takes things in order. Um, from like the very very beginner and then by the time you finish all eight of these books you will um, be pretty proficient at sight reading unfortunately they don't give you a whole lot to go here uh, with the preview but um, as you can see some of the rhythms you will be reading are quite a bit more complicated than what you saw in level one so I highly recommend you check out this Paul Harris series on Amazon Other than that, you can just type in sight reading practice, I don't know, and then maybe piano on in Google, and then scroll down. I'm um, just kind of like taking a look here. I really, really like this Sight Reading Factory website. Now, I believe there's a charge for some of the more advanced stuff, um, but I think there's some free stuff too. Okay, so you'll select your time signature. I like C major is good, right? Okay, free play. Okay, and then it gives you a sight reading example. So it looks like you can get free examples now on sightreadingfactory.com. Check those out and then, you know, set the settings accordingly to what you need. Um, coming back out here, I used to like this belmont.edu thing, but it, they took them away. I have to find if I have this saved somewhere. Anywho, that's not really an option anymore, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really like this one either. Okay, well, at least you got SightReadingFactory.com and then those books that I mentioned by Paul Harris. Real quick, I want to mention if you have a church hymnal lying around, those are good sight reading examples as well. However, those are on the little bit more of an advanced side, so you don't want to start out with that. But if you've been sight reading for a while, grab one of your church hymnals if you have one and just read through the hymns um, throughout. Okay, let me quickly make sure everything is still in working order. Everything looks pretty good, I think. Let me just make sure... Oh, that's not on. That won't be a problem for now, but it would be later, huh? There we go. Okay. 
Okie doke. Now, let's continue. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back. I will... Ooh, 54 watching now. How did that happen? I didn't think anybody was coming today. It was like 5 when I started. Okay, let's get on to it. Really cool that we have more people here. I think that's a record for us. Okay, I'm going to get on to the next thing. Here we go. The next thing you should be practicing is actually a few things wrapped in one. They are scales, arpeggios, key signatures, in the, and the like. So let me kind of define these for you. Okay, let me get out an example here. I have an example, but... Yeah, this is fine. Okay. Now we're good. So I'm going to first define what a key is. So a key is basically the selection of notes you're going to find throughout a piece. So if a piece is in, say, the key of C, well, the very definition of the key of C, we're not going over that so much in this lesson, but the definition of the key of C major is that it has zero sharps and zero flats. So if you have a piece in the key of C major and you're used to playing in that key, well, you know you're mostly going to be working with all those white keys because there's no sharps or flats. Can there be sharps or flats throughout? Um, yeah, maybe peppered out through uh, here or there, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you're mostly, if you're in that, key, in that key, you're going to be using notes within whatever key you're working with. Okay. A scale, as I just played, is when you put all the notes in the key, which are all these ones that you're using, in order from the key that you're in, also called the tonic, the first starting note, and then you play up the keyboard with all the scale notes in between up to your starting note again, or your ending note. So that is what we call a scale. So if I'm in the key of C major, the key of C, the C major scale will be just this. Now the great thing and how this applies to actually playing music is that when you have a, a piece in the key of C, you can visualize that this is what you're working with. So maybe you're like, okay, well that's pretty obvious, right? With the key of C, there's no, no sharps, no flats, um, and so forth. Well, what if you're in a different key? What if you're in the key of G? Well, if you've learned your G major scale, you know that there's an F sharp, but not only do you know that there's an F sharp, as you play the scale, you'll get a good feeling that where that F sharp is in the key, that it's on that next to last note, and that's going to be throughout the entire piece. So knowing your keys, knowing your scales is really important. Now, what in the world is an arpeggio? Well, an arpeggio is, so you have a normal um, three note triad chords, also called block chords when you play them all at once. And then you have an arpeggio, which is simply playing the notes separately. Now, what is the deal with this? Why should you learn these? Well, not only do they get to be fun to play, you are going to see these in your music quite often. I'm not even kidding. Let me just kind of show you an example. All right. Let me get um, an arpeggios here. Here we go. So we, here we have the Moonlight Sonata. And we have these groupings of three notes at the top with your right hand. And that's pretty much mostly what your right hand does in the piece. A little bit more to it than that. So you're playing those three notes over and over and over again. And hey, if I play all those notes at once, that sounds like a chord, right? Well, it is. So that, there's your triad, your three-note chord, and you're playing these arpeggios here. So here's an example of a piece that's made almost entirely of arpeggios, or at least has arpeggios in pretty much every measure. So, as you can imagine, learning these will kind of help you because it'll give your brain more information to go by. For instance, when I play this spot right here on the second line, second measure over, um, because I know 
my arpeggios and the theory behind it, I know that this is a C sharp minor chord in an inversion, so it goes, it helps me out a lot more rather than just saying like, okay, this is an E, this is a G sharp, this is a C sharp, and then figure out the notes down there. I can just look at that as a C sharp chord and be able to play it much, much faster. Now it takes time to be able to not only learn the theory behind it, but start applying it and then actually seeing it and analyze it in your music. It takes a long time to get there, but don't give up on it. It truly is worth it in the long run. Okay, on with the show, guys. That is not what I wanted. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay. All right, just kind of follow my notes here, make sure that I, oh. Right, scales and everything like that. Um, okay, well, I learned them. I explained that. Okay. How to practice scales and arpeggios. Well, there's a scales and arpeggios book that you can find on Amazon. I'll show that to you in just a second. Um, but basically, when you go through this book, you want to start with the scale and chords and everything that have the least amount of sharps or flats, which is, as I mentioned before, the key of C because the key of C has zero sharps, zero flats. Then after that, you want to learn the key with one sharp. And then after that, you want to learn the key with two sharps. See how you're going in order here, and then you can imagine the next key you would learn is A with three sharps, and then the key with four sharps, until you get up to seven sharps, which is the maximum amount of sharps you can have, because there are only seven unique notes in a scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you may be saying, well, there's eight notes. Yep, but it's the same as the first note. So seven individual notes. And then after you learn all the sharps, you want to go through and then you want to, you know, maybe start at C, zero sharp, zero flats, and then learn the key with one flat, two flats, three, and then so forth until you get to what number? As you can imagine, seven. Where are all my air conditioners turning on? It better not turn on. Um, okay. Give me a sec. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Oh, let me show you this book on Amazon. So, let's see here. Okay, taking a look at what these books look like, I would go for this one right here, The Complete Book of Scales, Chords, Arpeggios, and Cadences. This one is well worth it. You can find these online. However, I just find the way they're written out in this book uh, works the best for me. It's just very easily easy to visualize. Okay, on with the show. The next thing you should be practicing every day is your rhythm. And what is rhythm? Well, rhythm is basically the timing of the notes. So I can play fur release, right, like normal. It has a certain rhythm to it. Or I can just change up the rhythm. I'm playing the same notes, just in a different timing. So I'm changing up the rhythm. Same notes just in a different pace and different um, pattern of how you play them. So obviously, you know, like if I'm playing on the keyboard, the note I'm hitting is E. And then like, you know, I'm hitting them for one, two, three, four. It's my rhythm. And if I start playing them twice as fast, I've changed up the rhythm. Now, why should you practice rhythm and how is it going to help you? Well, it should be obvious. Well, you're going to be seeing rhythms all the time in your pieces. You know, knowing notes is only 
less than half of the equation because then you got rhythms and then you got dynamics and other things like that. So learning to master your rhythms is really important. Some ways you can practice your rhythms is to just pick out a piece of music you have, um, maybe like this Moonlight Sonata here. You know, taking out your sheet music and then maybe just clapping the different rhythms. So in the the um, the right hand, you have these just this triplet pattern. Bump 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 bump. Maybe start out simple like that, and then try to start maybe counting some more complex um, rhythms as you see them. Okay, let me bring up a website. Uh, let's see. How's everybody doing good? All right, perfect. Okay, another great way to practice your rhythm is by going to practicesightreading.com and there is a rhythm practice um, section right here. And basically what it does is it generates, automatically generates a um, an example for you to clap along with and then once you kind of think you have it down you can actually press play and it will play it along it doesn't look like oh I have it muted so never mind anyway you play it and then you can basically check your answer that way and then when you're ready for a new example you just click this bad boy wait a second what you just click this bad boy and it gives you a new example to play from All right. And you should be practicing, um, maybe just clap through like a few sections of music a day, maybe um, like maybe three or four lines of music should do it. So long as you're doing it consistently every day. Okay. The next thing you should be practicing every day is the pieces, right? So what what point is it learning all this stuff if you actually don't put it into practice? Well, what you should be doing now is learning pieces. I always recommend that students work on at least two pieces at a time. One piece that is on the easier side and then another piece that is more on the challenging side. So one's kind of for fun and easier and then one will actually challenge you, get you to learn a new skill apply a new skill, something like that. You also want to be making sure you learn pieces in different genre, um, different styles. So, so maybe like um, a classical piece and then a jazz piece, something like that. Um, something with different rhythms, different key signatures. You want to be changing it up, especially as you get to be more advanced. Now, when you're in the beginning stages, you probably want to be sticking to learning you know, nursery rhymes, real simple stuff like that. But as you branch out, really give every genre of music uh, a chance because learning the different styles and everything will just make you a more well-rounded musician. Like if you um, come across a style of music that maybe you need to play for a group or something, you'll be more um, apt to do it. And then also, you will also learn more about yourself because you'll discover that there are uh, styles of music that you like that you weren't even aware of before. Okay, so I kind of covered the what and the why on that one, and then how to practice. So how to practice pieces, well, you can actually go out on your own and hunt down, you know, piano pieces online or easy piano pieces, things like that, see if you can snag some for free shouldn't be too hard to um, find with a quick Google search. Or you can get a, um, a piano lesson book online or my courses over on my website. But let me show you really quick about the piano lesson books. Um, let me see here. I have one behind me, actually. I have a few behind me.
Okay, this is a piano lesson book. I highly recommend this um, series here by Alfred um, Publishing Company. So this is number two in the series. There's a pink book, there's this one, number two, and then a bluish book. Oh, hey, the pink and blue book are up there <laughs> right beside me. So I'm uh, just taking a look through here. The great thing about these is they'll introduce you, like number one introduces you from the very beginning but the cool thing about these is that they'll introduce you, like the beginning will be pretty easy, at least for whatever playing level you're at. And then always by the end of the book, things always get really, really interesting. And they give you tons of um, sheet music to play, as you can see here, which is great. Every page has new sheet music on it, pretty much. And they also have like lesson pages where they'll teach you about, um, sorry, I know this is the best way to film, but... Uh, they'll teach you about something and then on the next page they will give you a piece to practice it really cool You know what else does that the course is over on my website piano lessons on the web.com Specifically check out the uh, piano level courses. So there's piano introduction to piano music and then piano levels one through five So check that out as well if you want, but I always recommend Picking up even if you have my courses pick up one of these bad boys. It'll just give you some really interesting different music to play Okay, let me put this back. And then we've got like one more major thing to cover as part of the lesson. So just give me a second here. Okay. The next thing you should be practicing every day, or at least learning every day, is music theory. What in the world is music theory? Well, music theory is the study, or basically how to explain how music works and the inner workings behind it. Now, why learn music theory? Well, like I mentioned earlier in the lesson, the more information you can give your brain to work on when learning pieces, the better off you're going to be. So instead of looking at notes as individual notes, okay, here's an E, here's a G, Here's a C. You can look at them and say, okay, that is a chord, because I know my chords so well, I can play them in, in all their permutations uh, like that. So you get very, very apt at glancing at a sheet of music and then picking a lot more out of it. Let me show you what I mean. Hold on. Okay, so looking at this Chopin prelude, zooming in there. So I could look through this and look at the individual notes and then, you know, maybe have it take forever or an eternity to play. Or what I can do is because I know I'm looking here, okay, the key signatures, uh, E minor, in this case, you have um, the dominant notes here. You have some um, E minor chords in an inversion here. Now I know it seems like it makes it more complex, but once you get good at this, you can actually start to pick out things in real time, like this is a D minor chord in first inversion. And then it moves down here to an E7 chord. And then I'm looking also at how each chord moves between one another, also known as intervals, looking at that relationship there. So learn your music theory specifically, learn about, it was actually one of the, the numbers we had today. Make sure you're learning about keys, scales, um, key signatures, chords, chord inversions, uh, chord progressions, and, and much more, but at least learn those uh, five or six things. Okay, everybody.
Sorry, got some allergies going on. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, no, 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 we're not done yet. Um, let me do this. I have to explain how you learn music theory. So how are you going to learn music theory? Well, I have a free collection of videos here on the YouTube channel. I'll remember to put a link there in the description. And then also how you can learn is by going to pianolessonsontheweb.com and checking out my music theory courses over there. Remember to use code YouTube during checkout to get 15% off any order. Okay, I'm gonna do, so if you are new in uh, the live stream here, what I do is um, the first part of the lesson, I get edited, we edit it together and then it's released the following week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an outro. It's gonna seem like the live stream is ending, but it's really not. This is just an ending for when I piece, or my editor pieces the, the video together. So let me do this and direct everybody to watching something else. If you want to get a really firm grasp on everything we talked about today, make sure you check out this playlist of lessons right here that I made for you. And yeah, so check it out. That should keep you busy for a while, get you learning more and more about piano. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, here. Thanks for coming by today, and I'll see you in the next lesson. All right, everybody. Now, we're not going anywhere. I know it seems like we ended uh, here we go. So I'm going to say hello to some people. I'm probably not going to get through a lot of questions today. Um, <laughs> GB says, hi, Bird. I see the family is complete again. I see, yeah, because we got GB here. We got Rich here. Awesome. Some old schools. We got the Bird 101. I like the blue on the shelves. I do, too. I need to fix, uh, my editor was telling me I need to fix the shutter speed on my camera because that's what causes the flicker over there. Pretty minor, but... Um, I would like to solve it. I, I forgot about it until last minute and I'm like messing with the settings real quick, but I, I couldn't find it. Um, in a couple of seconds I had, all right, uh, let's take a look here. We got Sean Q back here once again, a welcome out. We got the bird 101, um, Darko welcome out. Happy to have you with us. We got muffin. Uh, I watched four years old olds on the piano and I either get embarrassed and then motivated. Well, that's very good. We got John Mack. Uh, how do I get motivated to do practice? Um, by think, trying to remember what got you started learning piano in the first place. So whether it was a teacher that inspired you, somebody you know, a band that you like, a video game, maybe you like the, the sheet music to a movie. Try to remember all that stuff, and that should help you uh, get more motivated. Looks like blue fire. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? First day here. Uh, welcome, Amen. Fingers crossed. All right. You're very welcome, Chisler26. Great lesson. All right. Well, we'll continue here. At least uh, I'll answer some questions. Uh, maybe while some more questions and everything's rolling in, we've got Rich here, of course. Uh, Wayne says, Tim, I really like your teaching style technique and equipment for giving online lessons. Thanks, you're very welcome. And welcome uh, everybody else that is in attendance. Uh, Tim, I forgot my password to enter website classes. Will you be able to assist please? Yes, Karen. Um, but email me, cause um, I won't remember, or I, I there's like a 50-50 chance I might not remember. So uh, email me, Tim at lessonsontheweb.com and just remind me there and I'll set you up real easy. Where's Tim's piano lessons on the web shirt? I don't know. Um, it's around here somewhere. I just wanted to change it up a little bit. I, I probably will go back to wearing that or design. I think it's time to design like a new one. Okay, welcome everybody. We got Brian here learning Billy Joel's Allentown answer, I can imagine. Marcus, what's up? We got Colette. I'm glad to have you with us. We got Daryl and then everybody else. All right, everybody. Let's get on with what 
I wanted to tell you about, which isn't anything too special, but always like to go over some things. Okay, so uh, on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, we'll talk more about this in a second, but if you go to the community page, you can check out what we're talking about and when. So as you can see on Sunday, we're going to be talking about the five sight reading tips for beginners. You really want to check that one out because as I said uh, in the beginning part of this lesson today, that sight reading is the most important skill you can have on the piano. So you want to definitely take a look there. And then you can see what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks until the end of the September. And then I will come up with the calendar for October. I already have an idea on what lessons we're going to do but not 100% yet. All right, yeah, so check that out. I need to bring back the list to get reminders 30 minutes before we meet. Kind of had a weird website glitch and lost it there, but it's okay. Easy, easy-ish fix. All right, and if you're interested, like you like my lessons on YouTube here and you want to learn a lot more about piano music, check out my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, where I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn a lot more about piano music, but not just piano, um, but you're going to learn about music theory, improvisation, rhythm, ear training, and anything else I felt you would need to be a well-rounded musician. Whether you're a beginner who that wants a solid foundation to build on or you have some experience already and you're looking to take things to that next level, my courses will help you do just that. You're going to learn a lot more than you can on YouTube because not only do they include instructional videos similar in style to these ones, they also include uh, printable sheet music examples, notes to follow along with uh, that you can download as well, uh, assignments, activities, and uh, anything else that will not Make sure that you're not only just learning each topic, but you're practicing and mastering that as well, which is so, so important when learning music. So check that out. You can sign up courses for courses individually or get a deal by picking them up in a course pack. So as you can see, uh, normally courses are $29.99 a piece. So with the beginner's pack, four courses there, you get it for only f basically 50 bucks, $49.99. And then the intermediate and advanced are more expensive but they include a lot more courses. One thing I want to tell you about is that um, if you um, say you want to pick up one of these courses and you go to checkout, if you put in the code YouTube, so add coupon code, code YouTube, you're going to get 15% off any order. All right, so I want to tell you about that. And back to the live stream. Uh, thank you, I will do. All right, perfect. Karen, great. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm going to give you guys a link to my website in case you've never been there, and then I'll get back to questions here. All right. Um, whoa, lots of people coming in, which is great. John Max says, thanks, bro, for the answer all the way from Kenya. All right, well, you're very welcome. Glad to have you with us today, John. We got Adria. Don't I don't think there would be learning music theory first, as music theory is the backbone of piano playing. That's true. It like like in terms of how things were brought about. Uh, he has what makes this song great. You could do a series. What makes a song a classic? Uh, Mark says you'll be at a million subs within a year. I think. Wow. I hope so. Do some song breakdowns. That would be good. Diagrams and pieces for us. Okay. What makes the song great? Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about doing something similar to that. You know your stuff for sure, says Marcus. Thank you so much. Look at Rick Beto's stuff. Okay, great. No reason not to do both. Yes, I agree. Hundred and fifty percent. All right. Any questions about what we talked about today? Uh, if not, we will conclude maybe a little bit early, which is fine. The lesson part. Um, I mean, the whole thing was really good, but the lesson part was really good and meaty today. 
I think this will turn out to be a pretty good, pretty good lesson. And look forward to the um, the lesson coming out tomorrow. It's going to be the first edited version, edited lesson by my new editor, Carrie. So we're going to see how that turns out. I think it turned out really well. I think you guys are going to like it for sure. And um, yeah. Or he says, so much left to be done on YouTube. I agree. Darko asks, uh, should I practice each hand perfect for a piece before I start practicing them together? The answer is no. You don't need them perfect. You might want to practice them hand separate first to just kind of get a feel, an idea for um, how it's played. And then um, you want to um, play them hands together. So maybe like once or twice hand separate and then try it hands together. You want to try it hands together as soon as as you're able to. So if you've been playing piano for a while, you probably can play a piece hands together right away. It might not be that great, but um, the faster you can get to playing hands together sooner, it'll just save you time in the long run. Pumped to see the new edits, Tim. Me too, Filthy Will. Actually, I've already seen it. <laughs> Pumped to get it out there. Yeah, it's it's um, the editing style is going to be a little bit more, just a little bit more of what it was. Like like it's going to be familiar, um, but it's going to have like some things it didn't have before that really uh, reinforce what I'm talking about. You're very welcome, Darko. All right, and then I'm trying to think about if there's anything I want to tell you guys that's coming in the pipeline. Um, really just trying to make things more than what they were before. So like I say, all the, not all the time, but I like to reinvent myself on YouTube like every few months. And I like to do it slow so it's not like really jarring. Um, but I like to do that. So that's what I'm just planning on doing for the rest of the year is keeping things familiar but just improving them. All the way around that always seems to be a good way to go all right any other questions about what we talked about today we had a good live stream a lot of people did attend which is awesome glad to see that for sure um yeah I think that's it, guys. Um, unless you guys have more questions, I'll stick around for another minute or two. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed. You have all notifications turned on because you know why. Uh, feel free to leave a super chat if you want. If you want to maybe give you, me a tip for today or obviously signing up for the courses on my website is the best way. Remember, code YouTube for 15% off any order of courses. All right, it doesn't look like anything's coming in, but I'm wondering if um, the chat is delayed. Oh, here we go. Do you think we sometimes practice with eyes closed? <laughs> um, sure. I mean, I can practice with my eyes closed. Not very well. Okay, I can't really practice that well. Oh, there we go. Oops. Now I can do it with a piece that I know well, but I cannot, I don't know how I'd learn a new piece. I guess my ears would have to get really good. But there you go. I'm here, Kevin's here. What up, Kevin? Glad to have you here. Billy Will says, I'm glad, uh, I believe it's good to practice without looking at the keys. That is true. You can glance down every once in a while, it's fine. End goal is to play without having to look down. Yeah, you can do that. You can also put a cloth over the piano uh, keys and play that way if you're too tempted. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to end it here today. I think that's it for the announcements, the lessons, and everything. So thank you so much for attending. Um, if I didn't get to say hello or answer your question, I do apologize. I got some burps coming. That's what's going on. Mm. Perfect timing. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming by. Thanks for being a part of our classroom. It's been your PM teacher, Tim, here, and I'm going to see you 
uh, tomorrow for the lesson coming out, and then I'm going to see you again on Sunday. So thanks a lot. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in just a few days. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, Adrius is pretty darn good job playing with eyes closed. Not bad. At first, it was like I had to get like the like my bearings, and then I can actually kind of feel where the notes are placed. Like I know that's B, right? C D E. There's C G C. So I do have a decent idea how the keyword's laid out, but like I said, playing something new because I'm such a visual learner in terms of piano anyway. Like I really need that sheet music and the theory behind it to learn a piece really uh, quickly. So that would be a challenge for me to learn something, you know, purely with my eyes closed. Thank you, Tim. We'll email you in the next day or so. Perfect, Karen. Yes, please do, because I don't want you to be in the dark about that. Billy Will says, thanks, Tim. See everybody next time and have a great weekend. You too. Uh, remember, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern is when we're going to be back. And hope this is not another fake end. <laughs> no, oh, this is a real end. Well, until next time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for coming by today. Have a great one. Um, Chisler26. We got Adria. Um, you are very welcome and have a great day.